Hi, I'm Professor Don Patterson, and we're working through a video tutorial on setting up Reversi as a web application. We've done a lot of work up till now. Right now, we're in the middle of setting up some business logic, or effectively enforcing the rules of the game on the technology of, that's communicating back and forth between the client and the server. We have a really nice setup going on right now. The client is sending messages to the server, and the server is updating the client with legal moves and with the position of all the tokens on, this, on the board. In order to flip tokens, we need to add some logic to the server so that after a token is played, all the tokens that are in between two tokens of opposite colors get flipped. So that's what we're going to do in this, in this video. All that work is going to be done on the server side because the client is already ready to show the animation of flipping tokens. So let's take a look at that. We're going to go to Visual Studio Code and open up server.js. Now the place where we're going to look is we're going to look in um, play token. So if we, let's go find it. So here is play token in my code. We can search for it. We can find it. Uh, this is where we get our message from our client that someone has clicked on a location and they're sending a message to want to place a token on the board. We do a bunch of error checking to make sure that the data that we're being sent is, is valid. We get a good row and a column. Last few videos, we made sure that it was the right player playing, meaning it's the, it's the white's turn or the black's turn. Um, and then we did some work um, to make sure that when that token was played, new legal moves were calculated in response to the change of the state. So what we're going to do now is after someone plays one of these tokens, we're going to consider whether or not any token should be flipped. And because that's the definition of a legal move in, in Othello, that's how that should happen. So after white plays, for example, right here and changes the state of the board, we're going to go ahead and flip tokens. This is going to be a um, method that we have to write that is going to take the player whose turn it is. So in this case, it's white because white just played. It's going to take the location where they just played, and it's going to take a copy of the game board that needs to be altered in order to reflect what tokens have been flipped. So if it's white and white plays, we'll do it with white, but down below we'll copy that and we'll paste it so that if it's black's turn, then tokens will be flipped respecting black's play. Now, in order to uh, make this work, we have to implement flip tokens. So let's scroll down a little bit. Um, I wanna go below where we created the new game and below check line match and below adjacent support, although it's gonna be a little bit like those and below calculate legal moves and before send update, the location doesn't matter exactly, but it's just convenient to have it in the same spot. And we're gonna implement the flip tokens uh, function. So there'll be function, flip tokens, and what we're going to take is who we're flipping, the direction we're flipping in, the base location, oh no, that's not what we started with. Flip tokens was who, row, column, who is playing, and the board that they're playing on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take code that's very much like the code that we had previously, identifying whether or not we had adjacent support. Not surprisingly, because flipping tokens and looking for adjacent support is kind of a similar activity. So we're going to paste that down here. And instead of saying adjacent support, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to change adjacent support to a, be a helper function, which is going to be called flip line. Flip line will take who we're flipping a relative direction that we want to flip in, so to the northwest, a base spot, our current row and column, and then the board. We want to change each one of these to reflect the different eight different directions that we can flip our lines in, and then save it up for uh, and format it there. Now we need to support that with our flip line function as well. So our function flip line is going to take each one of those items in turn, who, our delta row, our delta column, our row and our column, and our board, and it's going to do the work of trying to flip our lines. We're also going to need to take some code from above, the code where we check to see whether or not we've walked off the board. So I'm going to grab these lines here. We're going to alter them a bit, take them back to flip line, and paste them here. So as we're considering whether or not to flip a line, the first thing we're going to do is see whether or not the proposed token that we're asking, should we flip or not, if it's off the board. And if it's off the board, there's nothing to flip. 
whether that's walking off the left side of our row, or the top of our rows or the bottom of our rows, the left side of our column or the right side of the column. Then what we want to do is we want to say that if we encounter a space, it's not other, but space, then we're not going to flip anymore either. That's the end of our flipping. And then finally, if encountering a space, we encounter ourselves, our own color, then that is something that we're going to flip. If we don't encounter a space or we don't encounter our own color, then we must um, be encountering something that we need to flip. And so we are going to recursively call flip line on the next spot along that line. So we'll say who dr dc and we will do r plus dr and c plus dc. So move it down the line a little bit and pass the board again. So this is a recursive call. And if ultimately we did find that we bumped into our own color, that will be true, in which case we want to change all of the elements between there and our current spot, r plus dr and c plus dc. We want to set that equal to the color that we're currently flipping. And then we'll return true in turn. But if we walked off the board or we never, or we encountered a space, or we never encountered ourselves. Um, then we're going to return false, and nothing will be flipped as a result. So this is a little recursive magic here. And if we save that up, and we don't have any typos, then that should be all we need in order to do flipping of our tokens. To validate it, let's run our server and first make sure that we don't have any typos that just cause it not to run. Let's see what we get. Running cleanly. Let's go to our clients and let's enter a game. Start it off. All right. It is, I am black and it is black's turn. So we can see the hover effect is working well. I am white and it's white's turn, it's black's turn. So no legal places to play. So you're effectively waiting. Black would like to play on black, and if we do that, oh, we got some sort of bug. I tried to play there, and we got uh, it didn't work. So let's see what happened to our server when I did that. I saw I see that DC is not defined, so I must have had a typo here. Right here, I put two DRs instead of a DR and a DC. That was in the flip line function. So let me restart my server. Running clean. Let me go back. Let me go back. And why why didn't we load? Something else crashed. So in flip line, my logic was wrong. I said if it's not equal to space, then return false. Actually, if it is equal to space, if it's triple equal to space, then we return false because we ran into something that didn't that ended with a space instead of ending with our color. All right. I also have to change the equals here. If we're equals to who, if we're equal to the color we're looking for on the other side, then we return true. Let's restart our server. Go back, join, join, start a game, start a game. I am black, it is black's turn. Click here. Uh, now we get our nice animation. I am white, it is white's turn. There we go. Now we can see that effectively, we are following the rules of reverse eye, playing the game as it is meant to be played. A couple bugs along the way. Very small character errors can result in the code not working, as you see. Even people who are pretty experienced make errors like I did, so don't take heart if you have some errors. This is almost the complete game. The last thing that we need to do though is we need to check for our game over condition. And we're also gonna add um, a timer as well, just to put a little pressure on the opposite player. We'll do that in the next two videos though. Thank you for your attention.